Don't go adjusting your monitors. I realize that's not green. In fact, it's not even a proper blue screen. It's just some disastrous attempt at our fourth YouTube studio here in Spain. Not to worry, we shall do a little bit of wizardry, get rid of that backdrop, bring in the old one from our studio in Glasgow. Bish bash wash, happy days. I'm going to show you how to do the same in your own spare room with a one light green screen setup to get these amazing professional results. But first things first, let's turn back the clock and see how we got here. Green screen basics in hopefully one minute or less. Of course you need a green or a blue backdrop, could be a painted wall, can be a piece of fabric. Now you want to put some kind of separation between you and that wall so you don't get colour spill on your shoulders, on your hair, that's going to make your green screen look amateurish. This can be done by way of physical separation, so put some distance between you and the wall. It can also be done with the assistance of lights, so you light that background independently with a bunch of separate lights, then you have a key light on you as the subject. You might even have a backlight on you as the subject, put a nice hair light round your head and your shoulders, again creating some separation. Once you've done all this, you have a nice evenly lit background that you can remove in post, leaving you a nice clear cutout of the subject to do with as you wish. Now, the theory of that's very, very simple, but there's a couple of practicalities. It requires an enormous amount of space. If you want to put physical separation between you and your background, you'll quickly find out that even if you just creep a little bit closer to the camera and away from that background, you need an enormous background. I'm sitting in front of a piece of fabric that is three meters wide, and you can see the edges of that piece of fabric, and I am maximum a meter away from that piece of fabric. Second of all, this notion of using hundreds of lights to evenly light the backdrop and separately light yourself is extremely expensive and also takes up an enormous amount of space. So I am lighting myself here with one light, just a simple little LED panel, costs about $100, something like that. But the magic of this setup is the umbrella that I am using to diffuse that light. We need a nice soft light source. That umbrella costs all of 10, 20 pounds, you can get one on eBay or Amazon. You don't need one of those enormous great big soft boxes that you see all the YouTubers use along with this great big 100 watt LED. They are big and expensive. By all means get one if you can afford it, but you don't need it. You just need a nice big soft light source. Diffuse it in some way, shape or form. For more detail on lighting your YouTube videos, do check out the video that is playing right now. There's a card above popping into the screen. You can click on that and watch that video. We will teach you everything you need to know about lighting your YouTube videos. So there you have it. Drag your clip into your video editing software, look for the cure effect and remove your background. Normally done by selecting the colors you wish to remove. Because you've got a nice well lit setup, it's going to do a good job. Obviously you can do this in Final Cut Pro, you can do it in Premiere Pro, but you can do it in the free iMovie. You can do it in most video editing software actually. A piece of software that we recommend is Filmora 9, a nice stepping stone for Mac and PC users not looking to invest in Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro but wishing to spend a little bit of money to get extra functionality over and above free software. Get yourself a copy of our video editing software purchasing guide so you can compare and contrast the options there. I did a few post-production tweaks just to clean things up. I put the tiniest little blur on the backdrop just to give that tiny little bit of shallow depth of field that we have with this camera here. Also, I've chosen to put the light on myself off center. I want that kind of dramatic separation between this bright side of my face and the shadow side of my face. It just adds a bit more interest and a bit more dimension to this image. I've enhanced that in post-production. I've also darkened this side of the backdrop just to create that three-dimensional look that was achieved naturally with our studio back in Scotland. 
So that's it, there's really not a whole lot more to talk about to be honest with you. We have a backdrop, we have a light and we have a camera and the single most important piece of this entire setup is that shoot through umbrella that diffuses that light on me. That is the thing that will allow you to cheat the system and do away with all those separate lights that light up your background and that hair light that's going to give you separation, blah blah blah. Given that it's that easy, I'm going to cut this video short and say goodbye for now. Check out the links in our description to various free resources that we have that can help you on your filmmaking journey, along with some of our recommended suppliers that will help you get to that point. And we will see you next time.